So over the years, lots of people have asked me to write a book. And to be honest, I've not been very interested in it. And there's a few reasons for that, which I'll just quickly outline. I mean, the first thing is, I just don't like people having to buy the content that I create. I want it to be available to everybody for free. Second thing is that I really don't like the process of trying to get something to a state of perfection. Um, and that's kind of what's required if you're going to publish a book in, on paper. Um, and then the, th the third thing is I really don't like the idea that then if you've got something new to say, that you've got to publish another book. So I decided that I would write a book, but I'm going to write an ebook, and it's going to be more like a gardening course than it is just a book because it's going to have, well, a, a comprehensive set of resources. It's going to have templates and guides, traditional uh, book content, but also videos, databases, applications, everything effectively that's needed to uh, be successful in gardening. And ideally, it's also going to have a bit of a community around it, and it's going to evolve over time. Now, this book isn't finished. I don't think it's ever going to be finished. I'm constantly working on it. Yesterday, somebody said to me, uh, you don't really have that much about pests. So I kind of started the section on pests last night and I'm going to work on it today because it's going to be pouring down with rain and I really like something to do on a rainy day. And that's just going to be the way of it. I want to respond to questions. I want to do experiments. I want to capture the learnings for those experiments in the book. Um, and I want everything to be linked together into a cohesive whole. And that kind of brings me to the main reason really why I've written this book. Over the years, I think it's probably four years now, I've done a lot of YouTube content and I really like the YouTube format. I mean, I used to spend a lot of time writing reports when I was working. I retired five years ago and I, and I, and I really didn't want anything to do with writing. I just wanted nothing to do with that. I didn't want to do presentations or anything like that. I just like this free form, talking to the camera format. Uh, which is very relaxing, very easy, minimal editing, as you notice in my videos, I really don't do much editing. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. But the, the trouble with YouTube videos is, one, you can't update them when you've changed your mind about something. I mean, you could delete the video, uh, but that's kind of quite a, a big uh, step. And so the second thing is, I really don't like having to keep on repeating myself every year. And that's kind of what YouTube really encourages you to do, you know, is to constantly produce a, a new video. You know, this is how I sow spinach. This is how I sow spinach. This is how I sow spinach. Well, you know, there's no need for this constant repeat of the same old content year after year after year when so little changes. I mean, some things do change. But not very much, you know, maybe 5% of the content changes from year to year and you're just in this again and again and again. I do like the tour videos that I produce because I find those personally just incredibly useful to look back on to see what went well and what went badly last year and the year before and can kind of compare and contrast with what's happening this year. Uh, I find it's just a fantastic way of record keeping. But anyway, Repeating the same old video content again and again is just really demoralizing for me. So I don't really want to do that. And I found that this book format is kind of perfect for that for a couple of reasons. One is obviously it's really easy to just go and edit the text. Uh, but the other thing is it's much easier to also shoot shorter videos. So this is how to sew brassicas, for example, and have a short video on that. And then if you want to tweak the way that you sew brassicas, you can just tweak that little short one minute segment of video, replace that in the book. And, you know, that's, to me, that's a just so much better uh, and more sort of time efficient way of uh, communicating than republishing a whole new video about, you know, how to grow brassicas from start to finish or something. Um, and I find that that is actually you know, really appealing to me. I've produced hundreds and hundreds of videos over the over the last few years. Um, 
and I, and I just can't, I just don't have that appetite to keep on producing duplicate content every year. Uh, so hopefully the book will be a great way to surface a lot of old videos, which YouTube never surfaces, but are actually really good. Um, and also a great way, as I said, to keep everything bang up to date with my latest thinking. And not just my latest thinking, because I'm, I'm noticing as I'm writing the book that there are quite a few areas where the way that I grow is quite weak. So I'm very quick and dirty in the way that I garden. I, I really don't like fussing around very much. I don't have that much time for it. I'm also not very good at video making. You know, I'm just, I just don't like all like camera setups from multiple angles and all of this sort of thing. And just, you know, I, I just like point and shoot basically video cr creation. And so for those two reasons, because of my weaknesses in the way that I garden, and because of my weaknesses in the way that I make videos, I also want to link to content that addresses those weaknesses. And I just did that recently, for example, because I don't grow big onions. You know, my objective is to grow a really high yield of your onions, so maximum, high, maximum yield, so high intensity growing. But I know a lot of people really like to grow big onions because you can't buy them in the shops. They look really impressive. They might want to show them. Um, and so I wanted to link to, you know, two top-notch onion growers. And so I did that in the chapter on, on alliums, for example. And I'm going to do that as I go forward, linking to other people's YouTube content that is better than mine. You know, for, and I actually just did that as well for carrot sowing because, you know, there's a guy called Ronald Shaw. He's got a really meticulous, really refined technique for sowing carrots. And I just don't have the appetite for that. Um, but I know a lot of people do and so you know I want to link to his content because it's just really great and so that's just the general uh, approach that I'm taking so what I wanted to do now was just take you through a kind of outline of the book and uh, talk you through that and then hopefully go start reading it and I'll also show you how you can kind of keep up to date with new content and, and all of that so I quickly wanted to just show you around the book and the basic idea. So I'm actually showing you this on my desktop PC using the Notion app on the PC, but it looks exactly the same in a web browser and on an iPhone, Android phone, tablet, etc. So it's pretty universally accessible. And so it starts off with the video introduction and that basically is a link to the video that you're watching now and some background information basically uh, about why I decided to do the book. Then there's a kind of introduction to the book, like every book, and then a section on using the book and that basically goes through all the different sections in the book and you know what you can find in those sections. So it's kind of similar to what I'm talking about now. And then there's a section on the philosophy, my philosophy of life and gardening. And I find that it's quite useful to choose a style of gardening that matches and aligns with your philosophy of life, your kind of um, habits and personality and all of that sort of thing. And so I thought I would list my kind of philosophy of life and then I'll link that to how I garden and so you can see how well that matches your approach to life and see if this would my style of gardening would suit you and if it wouldn't just choose a different style of gardening uh, or only just choose parts of mine or change it whatever um, and this is kind of one of the things that I'm quite keen on in this approach to creating a book is that I do allow you if you're a member although you can get around that because you can just send me an email and I'll give you a free membership to take a copy of this book um, and make it your own. And I've actually created a section in this book, which is just an early draft basically, that talks about why you might want to make, take a copy of the book and make it your own. And all sorts of reasons there. 
and so if that appeals to you you might want to just drop me an email and say you want to do that um, no requirement to do that though as I said if you're a member very soon within the next week or so I'll sort out the mechanism by which you can get a copy of the book and all of its contents edit it to suit your environment personality whatever you want to do and then republish it if you want to keep it private if you want to um, charge money for it if you want to give it away if you want to uh, I'm happy provided you just give me credit for the initial concept and even that you, you don't have to do that either it would just be nice so that's the philosophy of life and gardening that's kind of all about the way I think and then I've got the section I quite like the section it's a really simple introduction to what I consider to be the basics of gardening and I go through planning, sowing, growing with lights, planting, uh, hardening off, looking after the soil, dealing with pests, dealing with weeds, and growing under cover. And there's some reasonably useful content in here. I am just working on there, dealing with pests and dealing with weeds sections, uh, but the other sections are all written. And this is really basic stuff. You know, it just goes through all the details that I'm always being asked. What compost do you use? What potting compost do you use? How do you sow? Where do you get your seed trays from, etc., etc.? What labels do you use? All of those basic details, as well as all the kind of techniques of sowing. So that's the basic section. And then I go through how much space you need to be self-sufficient. That's quite an interesting section. I enjoyed writing it. It goes through all the details, all the facts, figures, numbers and things of, of how much we grow, how much harvest value we uh, pick um, and how to translate that into the amount of space that you need to be self-sufficient for different numbers of people. Choosing what to grow, again, I kind of enjoyed playing around writing this section. It goes through some quite interesting stuff in terms of thinking about how you would rate different types of fruit and veg by taste, by health, by economic value, and then kind of figuring out a ranking system. I provide the database for free that does all of this. Um, and working out what your kind of top lists are for the things that you grow so i've done that for the things that i grow and this is my top list i'll go through all this in another video in more detail but um, yeah these are the things that i think are the absolute best things to grow Lots of fruit, of course. I do love my fruit. Anyway, what I've also done, which I think is a little bit more useful, is ranked the salad leaves and the brassicas and the alliums and the spinaches. And I'll do more of these as time goes on in terms of what are the absolute best varieties. And I'm also working on this by season as well. So what's best to grow in spring, what's best to grow in summer, all from the same underlying database. So I'm working on this section, but this is designed to help you kind of translate what you eat into what you grow. Uh, then I've got these growing guides, which I'm really happy with these actually the way they've turned out so these are guides really for somebody who wants to be self-sufficient as to how to grow peas and beans so that you've got them all year round how to grow spinach so that you've got it all year round how to grow potatoes and store potatoes so that you've got them all year round and the same with carrots and salad leaves etc etc not all of these are written um, but they are just being progressively written you know about one a month or something like that so by the end of the year, hopefully, all of these will be available. Let's 
So then I'm going to do, but I haven't done yet, sample planting pans. So there'll be a kind of back, back garden, small back garden planting plan, a polytunnel planting plan, a coal frame planting plan, or several planting plans, um, low tunnel planting plans, um, all sorts of different types of planting plan for different types of environment. And I've got a section on gardening month by month. So this is just a summary really of the whole year. And again, this actually was based on an article that I wrote last year, I think, which goes, it tries to encapsulate everything in a really summary form in one page and it goes through each month with an idea of what to sow, what to plant, what to harvest sort of thing uh, each month. Uh, but I've embedded into it my actual sowing guides. So these are, you know, that, these are the actual seeds I sowed in January of 2021. These are the actual seeds I sowed in February 2021, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but right now I'm recording this in February, so this one for March is the actual seeds I sowed in 2020. Uh, but as time goes on, these will all be updated to the latest versions uh, of what I sowed. And then, as I said, like a high-level summary of why you might sow things. So it's not just the list of things to sow, but the logic behind what to sow and what to plant and when. So that's quite nice. And then, right, so next bit is on harvesting. So this is quite a comprehensive section on harvesting. Um, it talks about the kind of mechanics of harvesting. So, you know, the, how to make harvesting easier, getting into a good routine, organizing the way you harvest, how to clean and prepare your harvest, sorting and packing, all of that sort of thing. Uh, but then it also goes on to sort of broader issues like the ways to increase the length of the harvest period, um, and you know, pl planting strategies, interplanting strategies, eating more of the plant, um, you know, waste to get more harvest from the same land area, overlapping your planting plans, um, and then how to make your harvest last longer, things like the cold chain, spinning, washing, sealing, things like that. So that. I quite enjoyed writing that section, I must admit. All of these have loads of embedded content as well. And then sections that I've not yet written. So there'll be a section on storage and preserving, a section on gardening tools, you know, forks, spades, those sorts of gardening tools, and then gardening tech. So all the different sort of techie stuff that I use um, and how it all works, how it all integrates together. So I have lots of Bluetooth thermometers and propagators and grow lights and you know all of that sort of thing. So all that sort of tech, as well as all my databases and things like that, guides to all of those. As I said, this chapter I've already shown you, I'm making the book your own. And then I will, but I haven't started yet, write some individual growing guides for individual things. So how to grow lettuce, how to grow Brussels sprouts, how to grow cabbage, etc. And the reason I've not written those is that they're such well-trodden ground. You know, every gardening book includes a section on those different types of vegetables and how to grow them. That information is on the back of seed packets. You just need to Google any particular veg and how to grow it, and you'll find plenty of information. So there's just so much stuff about that. But I thought, I was kind of reflecting on whether it was worth, you know, yet more information on that. And in the end, I decided that it was just for the sort of consistency of philosophy. So when you read all the rest of this book, 
if you kind of like the way that I do it, you might then like to see how all that applies to growing sprouts. So the way that I do pest management, the way that I do weed management, the way I look after my soil, you know, the way I extend the season, etc. You take all of those different things and then apply that to sprouts and apply that to lettuce and apply that to radish, etc. Um, and I thought that in the end, there was actually enough useful new content to make it worthwhile. And then I'll just have a sort of section uh, with frequently asked questions where, you know, maybe I just don't have uh, any place in the book right now to answer those. I'll just stick them in frequently asked questions and over time I might incorporate that into a new chapter or whatever. So that is the basics of the book and how it all hangs together. I just want to quickly show you that I've got a little change history. So every time I make a significant change to the content, I'll put a description of that change here, the date and time of the change here, and a link to um, the uh, chapter where the change took place. And what else do I want to show you? Oh yeah, let's just quickly go into one of the growing guides. And I'll choose spinach. So as I said, these are focused on how to grow something all year round. And so I go through different types of spinach uh, that are good in different times of the year and how to grow all of those and the benefits and pros and cons and all of that sort of thing. Um, and then there's kind of like little embedded timelines from my database with all the different types of spinach and the best growing times for them. And then a month by month view. So what types of spinach are we harvesting in January? And what am I recommending you sow and plant in each of the months of the year? I found this even, I use this quite a lot and reference back myself. It's a lot to keep track of when you grow 250 different varieties. Interplanting strategies as well. What to grow before and what to grow after the different spinaches. An idea of how much to grow and then embedded content from my database about the recommended varieties as well as uh, related videos. So if you want more videos about spinach, you can find them here. Uh, all this is embedded content. When you see these sections, you just click in them, into them and then use the up and down arrow keys to scroll through them or your finger. So if you're doing it on a tablet or a phone, you just tap into the embedded content box and then just swipe up and down with your finger, which is really nice. And then some of the sections have, and some of the sections will soon be getting, additional useful links to other articles. Um, so not all by me, uh, some by the RHS and other really good sources of sort of generic growing information. So I think with that, I'm kind of finished with the basics of the book and the kind of structure and how it all hangs together. And what I did want to say is just how to get hold of it. So on in your browser, you can just type um, gardening-ebook.info. Actually take you to one of these quick link pages. And I, I think these are quite useful of course, I'll always take feedback, but basically this is the quick link page for the book. So what you'll see here is the embedded video. And right now that's just a placeholder, but it will be this video that you're currently watching, which is an introduction to the book. And then there'll be a link to recent changes to the book, an introduction to the book using the book. And then the sections of the book that are currently finished, whereas the... Um, link that actually takes you to the whole book shows you the sections that are empty and that are just outlines so that's quite useful um 
and then links to other resources, frequently asked questions, uh, not just about the book, but about everything. Uh, my photos on Instagram and things like that, uh, as well as a map of where we are. So that's a quick link page and there'll be all sorts of book related links there. They might not all be in the Notion app. So yeah, that's a good place to start. And if you click on here, then it, you know, this one will just take you to, uh, to the whole book, which we've just seen. Um, and for example, if you click on recent changes to the book, it'll just take you to that specific page. Similarly, if you click on, you know, vegetable gardening basics, it will take you to that page. So it's kind of like a contents list effectively to the book. So that's quite useful. Um, and then you can also go down here and there's another quick link page. And that one takes you um, to all of my other gardening related information. So for example, there is a link back to the gardening book, but there's also my diary uh, and sewing guides and timelines and all sorts of other stuff like lists of all the seed packets and things like that. And everything you can find from my website, which is steves.seasidelife.com or also just seasidelife.com works as well. And here you can find links to those quick link pages. And there's the other one. And my allotment diary. And all sorts of other content on my website. So lots of different places. And of course you can also find it from every YouTube video, just look in the description of the YouTube video or the frequently asked questions link in the YouTube video. So I hope you like this quick video. And as I hope I mentioned, I'd really like feedback from people. So feedback in terms of, you know, things that they think I've got wrong, things that I could improve on, content that's missing and all that. Now I'm not promising to address it, but uh, I'll certainly consider it. And I also kind of offer this membership scheme through Buy Me A Coffee. And you can become a member and pay a subscription fee. It's only a couple of pounds. Um, and there are some benefits to that and they're always evolving. So I won't tell you what exactly they are at the moment, but if you go and look on the Buy Me A Coffee site, then you'll see what those are. Um, but it's not really about the benefits. It's about people who just want to give back and get a little bit more and be able to contribute to the direction of the ebook and the apps and the website and the YouTube channel. Uh, basically, you know, it's just an enthusiast club, I, I guess you could call that. Um, and it's great because it means that all my costs now are covered through that mechanism. And so I, will, I won't have to charge for the ebook. Um, and as time goes on, if this works out well, then you know, I might even be able to stop doing adverts on the YouTube channel. So that would be really great because I absolutely, I loathe adverts. Anyway, my name is Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. Happy reading. I'll see you soon.